Um, but I do want to hit Uber. Uh, because we've made it our chart of the day as that stock is down and down significantly near 12 percent. Um, that's after gross bookings did miss. Their uh, outlook for the holiday, uh, holiday time period was fairly soft. Uh, Josh Brown joins us now uh, by phone. It is, I think, still his largest position. If not the largest, it's right there with NVIDIA. So what's your assessment, Josh, of, of the quarter, what the stock is doing today? So... Two, two different things. I think what the stock is doing today is sort of bizarre. I know that it's getting lumped in with all of the other growth stocks that are down. They just picked a bad day <laughs> to report, I suppose. I'm looking at uh, Robinhood off 17 percent, Uber off 12, Coinbase down 10 percent, NVIDIA uh, four and a half, Meta four and a quarter, Microsoft down. So it's just a, it's just a lot of selling in tech and in growth stocks in general. And uh, it's, it's, as they, they say in uh, British soccer, unlucky. I would say it's one of the best quarters this company has ever reported. Net income was $2.6 billion, or $1.20 per share. I want everyone to understand that's versus the same quarter a year ago, net income was $220 million and only $0.10 cents a share. So what this company has done over the last 12 months is really miraculous. The only... Uh, flying the ointment here seems to have been the gross bookings number, which, quite frankly, was not bad. I mean, if you just look, go by the stock price reaction, it looks like they, they dropped some sort of a bombshell. But it's, quite frankly, not the case. So um, they, are, they are, if you look at mobility, if you look at uh, the Eats business, they are firing on all cylinders. And I think whatever we're seeing on the screen today a is an overreaction. We've retraced all of the gains back to September 12th uh, at this point. And B, if this were a green tape for the NASDAQ, I think today's uh, loss would probably be cut in half, if I had to guess. You know what I find interesting, and before I let you go, because I know you got a hard out and I appreciate you joining me, um, Josh, um, Joe sold Uber this morning, so I want to give the ball to Joe for a minute to explain that and get your reaction to whatever he says is the reason why. Josh is going to completely understand. I own it personally. I've owned it personally since March of uh, 2023, bought it in the mid-30s. I've had a very levered position to Uber, owning it personally, and then the ETF uh, owning it from January of 2024. So I've, I've rode the momentum higher. Uh, I've ridden what has been very strong fundamentals. What did I not like about what I heard? It's what Josh talked about. It's the gross bookings. It's the guidance on the gross bookings. And it's very clear that now higher insurance costs are a challenge for this company. And the only way to resolve that challenge is to pass it through to the customer, which is going to be difficult. That's going to lead to a, a, a challenge in terms of pricing. So really, I'm, I'm working off what was a very levered position. It's still in the ETF. I own it through the ETF, but it's time not to own it in both places. Yeah, Josh. Uh, Joe's exactly right. Insurance was an issue, but Dara said, and I think he said it on our network to Andrew Rosorkin as well, that the rate of increase of the cost of insurance is is going to slow relative to what it was. But yes, it's a, it's a, it's an issue. They're passing along that price to customers, and typical price elasticity rules. So the, you know, when you price something higher, you're going to get less. Uh, you're going to get less bookings. Um, as far as the numbers themselves on the bookings, though, I think it's really important. When people say soft bookings, that's actually a mischaracterization. These are the numbers. Uber provided a range um, for Q4 of $42.75 billion at the low end to $44.25 billion at the high end. According to Street Account, the estimates were 43.68. So the estimates are right in the middle of the range that Uber provided. I think uh -huh. it's smart for them to give, you know, relatively uh, tame guidance. And if they can exceed that, you'll see whatever, six, seven points taken off the stock added right back. So I'm a long-term shareholder here. I respect Joe's decision. He's got 100% profit in the stock, give or take. I get it. I'm doing something different here. I think that this company has the ability to become, because of its TAM and how well it executes, to become one of those MAG-7 type names over time and totally dominate this category. And I want to be here for that. And look, I've been in the stock for, I don't know, five years, six years. I've seen this thing 
uh, cut in half. I've seen it have great earnings re responses, poor earnings responses. This is just part of what it means to be a long-term investor as opposed to okay. a trader, and I'm riding it out.